If it is a pro console, it should come with the pro controller. No question. Like it is, it's like the perfect layup. It's like if you see Jordan on a fast break. What what we doing, bro? Hey, lob it up. Like it's it's a slam dunk, bro. <laughs> oh boy. Oh man. Listen, y'all. It's a lot of drama happening today, man, when it comes to this PS5 Pro, but we're gonna talk about it because is the PS5 Pro actually expensive in 2024? Let's talk about it. So today, man, we finally officially got a first look at what this PS5 Pro is actually going to look like, as well as some of the features, the release date being November 7th, the pre-order date being September 26th. We still don't know the time that's going to be, but hopefully we're going to get that soon and way more that they actually didn't share during their live stream event. First thing we got to talk about, y'all, and that is probably the big topic of discussion or probably the biggest controversy when it comes to the PS5 Pro, and that is pricing. So the PS5 Pro here in the U.S. is going to be $699, 699 in Great Britain or the British Pound, $799.99 in Europe, and $119,980 in Japanese yen, which is about $842.90 here in the U.S. And yes, I did look it up. So for starters, man, do I think the price of the PS5 Pro is expensive? Absolutely, freaking lutely yes, I do. Do I think the upgrades that we are getting warrants that price though? The answer to that question is not as easy as a yes and no, but let me explain. So from a CPU perspective, it has literally the same processor uh, as the OG PS5 as well as the PS5 Slim. So there's no changes there and so is the SSD speeds as well, which to me, I'm gonna be real with y'all, the SSD speeds I always thought was fine, so I didn't really feel like they needed to change anything there. Now when it comes to the GPU, this is where I feel like it's more considerable of an upgrade than what we had in the past because we're getting 67% more in computing cores. So before we go any further, Further, let me go ahead and kind of break this whole thing down exactly what this means before you guys go out there and put that pre-order in here towards the end of this month. 67% more computing cores means that it's now going to allow the PS5 Pro from a graphics perspective to be able to display better as well as sharper images and more just detailed visuals than it was able to do before. Because listen, you guys are either OG PS5 or PS5 Slim owners. You know good and well when you are out there gaming on that console the images in it looks more kind of smooth over. It's like a, I don't know, it's almost like they added a filter to, you know how they had like those beauty filters? That's what it kind of looks like when it's gaming. And a lot of the games in itself, it looks like it has lost a lot of the details when it comes to the PS5 as well as the PS5 Slim. Now fast forward this to the PS5 Pro because the more computing cores that you have, the more tasks the GPU is gonna be actually able to handle at one time, which in turn is gonna improve your performance and even efficiency, which will also help with keeping the system properly cooled from overheating because listen we don't want no overheating issues <laughs> now the next thing we got to talk about and that is 28 percent increase in faster ram now i'm gonna break this thing all the way down man so that way you guys can fully understand what's going on before you go out there and spend your hard-earned ducats on it because most creators out there man they're just gonna bash this thing man right off the top they're gonna look at the price tag and be like whoa 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 seven hundred dollars and without giving you any type of context as to what's going on me I'm gonna keep it all the way funky here, man, and tell you what's really happening. So, what faster RAM speeds mean when it comes to gaming is different and it offers advantages that PlayStation didn't tell you. When dealing with increase in faster RAM within a gaming console, one of the major key benefits is it's gonna boost the console's response time, as well as one major thing being it's also gonna improve on the frame rates when you compare it with a system with less as well as slower RAM speeds. But it's also worth pointing out, man, that it also depends on the game. Some games benefit from having faster RAM versus others, as some need to be able to access quickly large amounts of data. And I'm sure you guys already know this nowadays, man, that these games that we are getting are like freaking movies, and they're more complex than they've ever been by the day. So having an increase in RAM speeds is a win for the PS5 Pro. Now the next thing it has is faster rendering times, which has been increased by 45%. So see kid, what the hell does this mean when it comes to the PS5 Pro? Basically meaning y'all, it's gonna give you a smoother experience when gaming with way fewer delays. So. Have y'all ever been out there, right? You've been playing a game, whether it's Spider-Man. Spider-Man is a good one. You ever been swinging through the city or whatever, and you just notice whenever you running or you walking or whatever, you swinging into a new scene or something like that, you notice how it takes a little bit of time in order for the background to render that scene or the background of the city of what's happening? Well, with this here being increased by 45%, 
I'd imagine that that game there in itself is going to render a whole lot smoother and a whole lot faster with little to no delays. All right, so before we actually get into some of the other things that PlayStation didn't really get into that I'm going to give you guys in this video here, but I want to talk about the CPU not being updated because I know this was kind of a topic of discussion, uh, the fact that they're actually using the exact same from the OG PS5 and the PS5 Slim. So for me, it's all about optimizing a system to run the best way that it can. And this is not me giving, listen, I'm not giving PlayStation a pass or anything like that, but I do feel like with the increase in the GPU computing cores, the 28% increase in RAM speeds, as well as the 45% increase in rendering times, it's taking further stress off of the CPU to allow the CPU to run more efficiently, as well as effectively giving us an overall, just better gaming experience on the PlayStation as a whole. Now, I gotta keep it funky with y'all and honest, man do i feel what we are getting on the ps5 pro should have been what the og ps5 should have been out of the gate 1000 percent absolutely y'all like i do feel like we are getting what we should have got back in 2020 and i think as a playstation fan this is probably one of the things that kind of gets under my skin when this whole thing was announced is the fact that years later we are now getting what people were expecting the og ps5 as well as the ps5 slim was going to be that we didn't get until now so i feel you guys on that one man and i believe me y'all i'm right there with you man so right now man i want to do something real quick and i, I want y'all to follow with me man because I'm, I'm gonna bring this whole thing home right so i'm gonna put a little counter down here on the bottom of the screen so with the og ps5 right now being 500 dollars to get do you feel like those upgrades that i just broke down to you guys are worth a hundred dollars at least a hundred dollars worth of an upgrade right let me know in the comments because right now i'm bumping our total to from the base price of the $500 to now $600 if that's the case because I'm gonna go ahead and keep that money counter down there so just keep an eye out on what's getting ready to happen now the next thing we're actually getting is this new feature called uh, pro mode now what this is is this is a feature where for games that are upgraded to take advantage of this feature um, It's actually going to combine 60 FPS and 4k Together and it's going to allow us to be able to game in true 4k 60 FPS now according to PlayStation There will be over 40 to 50 games at launch in November that will be able to take advantage of this feature and to me I'm gonna be real with y'all man. I think 50 games, you know 50 or something games like that I think at launch is pretty solid for the most most part now the question is is which is something that I'm still really trying to find out um, is what are all of the games that's gonna be on that list now I do know some of the games on that list and I have it right here on my phone let me actually pull it up here for you guys uh, real quick now some of the first games that's gonna be on here we got Alan Wake 2 we got Assassin's Creed Shadows uh, Demon Souls Dragons Dogma 2 Final Fantasy uh, 7 Rebirth Gran Turismo 7 Hogwarts Legacy Horizon Forbidden West Spider-Man 2 Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart uh, The Crew Motor Fest First Descendant and The Last of Us 2 Remastered now This is some of the games that are actually going to be ready for this 4k pro uh, feature at launch now what are gonna be some of the other games listen i know god of war better be on that list and i know ghost of tsushima better also be on that list because if not hey return to sender <laughs> i'm just playing now if these here man are on the list man i'm happy because these are some of the games that i plan on replaying to actually test out the graphics and performance but we just gonna have to kind of wait and see what's gonna happen now i'm actually not sure um, if the games that are not able to take advantage of that, what are those actually going to look like on this system? Again, this is something that we just going to have to kind of wait and see. Another thing that was kind of on my mind with this whole 4K Pro feature is, will there be like a 4K Pro label next to the game? Because how else are you going to know if these games are actually 4K Pro compatible, right? I'm not sure how they actually gonna do that, but I think it would be dope if they added some type of logo next to the name. So that way you know this is a 4K Pro enabled game. Now, another thing that really wasn't mentioned that I actually thought was kind of cool was the fact that uh, based on the games that you guys are playing, because it can unlock an 8K mode as well as a 4K Pro mode, just like it can on PC games. Now, it can also unlock an extra ray tracing effects as well as features, which is really kind of similar to what we get on PC games. Gaming, which would be dope because PC right now if you've ever gamed on PC man They really allow you guys to fine-tune your graphics as well as the performance Which is just settings unlocked inside of the game that I didn't even know freaking existed until I actually started gaming on PC Which I actually think is dope now that based on the game that you guys are playing on PS5 Pro 
that you could possibly unlock some of those features too. Now also it's worth noting that with those games automatically getting frame rate improvements without actually needing an upgrade patch, dedicated 120 FPS modes will also be something that's coming to this console too. Now again, even with this, right, I'm still keeping that price at $600. Now, I done added all of that stuff up above, I'm still keeping that counter at $600. Now here's where I feel like we actually gonna get a bang for our buck a little to whereas it may seem small, but I think it's actually a big deal and a cost saver in a way. So currently on my OG PS5, right, I only have one USB-C port and one USB-A port on the front. And then on the back of that, I got two USB-A ports, which is cool, don't get me wrong. Now, we move on over to the PS5 Slim, they updated that and they removed the USB-A port on the front and added an additional USB-C port, giving us two USB-C ports on the front and keeping the two USB-A ports on the back. But now, on the brand new PS5 Pro, which is something they didn't mention or announce, and that is it includes an extra USB-C port on the back instead of a USB-A port, which to me, this is huge, man, because we still get the two in the front, we get an extra one in the back, which to me, y'all, this is huge, especially if you wanna be able to stream gameplay or just hook up additional accessories with your PS5 Pro. Right now, I got things that I personally be wanting to hook up to my PS5 Slim that requires USB-C, but, with the controller plugged in, and then I got my headphone dongle plugged in, listen, I'm pretty much tapped out as far as the ports go. So adding this extra USB-C port on the back to me is clutch. Now the next thing they didn't mention during the live stream was that it comes with two terabytes of internal storage. Now this is where I feel like we gotta move the money counter here at the bottom. So as y'all know, man, games these days, y'all, is getting crazy. And I mean crazy in file sizes. If you've ever played Call of Duty, do you know what the <laughs> if you've ever played Call of Duty, then you already know what I'm talking about, man. Them updates is just Freaking ridiculous, y'all. And even games like Forbidden West, large size games. Ghost of Tsushima, large size games. So having a two terabyte of internal SSD storage is a major W, y'all. And you can still expand your storage even more with an external M.2 SSD slot like you can on the previous models. Now, when it comes to the PS5 Pro here, in house here, I'm actually gonna be making sure that I show you guys exactly how to take the PS5 Pro apart, install one into the system, so that way you can see internally what it's gonna look like, we're gonna see if it's different inside. So, on my live stream, man, I went on Amazon, right? I priced out a two terabyte M.2 SSD drive from Western Digital, and that came to $170. So now that actually puts our total here, I'm gonna add on $170 to $770, but now they're giving you two terabytes, so technically two terabytes should last you a decent amount of time before actually needing to add additional storage. So now when we look at it, right, we're now under the $700 price point that they gave us by $70 and we're saving money. Now listen, I'm not saying $700 is not a lot of money, I just wanna offer you guys a different perspective of looking at this versus just saying, oh man, it's $700. Again, $700 is a lot of freaking money. Now the next thing that they didn't mention, which to me is a major upgrade, and I feel like it's gonna save people a shit ton of time, and that is adding Wi-Fi 7 to the PS5 Pro. Listen, this one right here, man, I was probably more excited for this one than probably most of the stuff that they talked about today, because listen, I don't, you already know, if you currently got the OG PS5 or you got the PS5 Slim, the Wi-Fi on that bad boy and networking is just not the best. I gotta be honest, I gotta keep it funky with y'all, man. It takes so freaking long to download games on that system. And I'm the type of person over here, I got five or two gigabytes of speed over here, so my Wi-Fi and my internet speeds is top tier. But for some reason, the PS5, I feel like it's capped at certain download speeds to the point where I'm not able to utilize my full Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi speeds. So with Wi-Fi 7, y'all, I'm actually hyped for this because I've been using Wi-Fi 7 here in my home now for a while, and it is legit, y'all, once you guys integrate it within your home the right way. Now, I use the Eero Max 7 router, and it is such a fire-ass router, y'all. Now, even my non-Wi-Fi 7 devices even got a bump in speeds because of this router. So this is the one thing that I can't wait to actually test out with the PS5 Pro. Now, keep in mind, in order for you guys to really experience this, you need to make sure your ISP offers fiber or some type of fast internet speeds to fully take advantage of Wi-Fi 7 speeds. But also, you need to make sure that you have a Wi-Fi 7 router as well, which I'll have one that I recommend down in the comment section below as well as the description section, and I'll have a pinned comment. Trust me, y'all, it is... 
It's such a good router, man. And with the PlayStation Portal, I'm now definitely gonna be looking forward to now testing the Portal with the PS5 Pro not having to be hardwired into my network in order for it to run smooth within my home. So with that being said, right, our total at the bottom right now is $770. With my research of Wi-Fi 7 cards, if you were to buy that, that's gonna cost you about $70. So now, that gets our total now to about $840. Now we over by $140 versus what it would have cost if we was to price this stuff out. Now this is what I mean by when I said, yes, it is absolutely expensive at $700 dollars but is it worth seven hundred dollars is this now starting to make sense now i gotta be fair y'all i gotta talk about some of the things that i personally didn't agree with and i talked about this on my live stream today and shout out to all of y'all that pulled up on the live stream today if you did let me know down in the comment section below it would putting a w down there <laughs> i think the main question that people out there including myself as well as you guys out there the main question people kind of want to know or they're asking themselves is who is the PlayStation? Who did PlayStation make the PS5 Pro for? In my honest opinion, y'all, I do not think the PS5 Pro was made for people who already have an OG PS5 or you got the PS5 Slim. Now, don't get me wrong, I do like the upgrades and everything that we are getting. I do feel like these are some good upgrades that were needed with the PS5 lineup. I just don't know if I could tell you guys right now to actually go out there and spend $700 to upgrade from your already perfectly working fine $500 PS5 or your PS5 Slim that some of you guys just spent your hard earned money for and for me, man, I just say the PS5 Pro is mainly gonna be for that person that's possibly coming from a PS4 or you coming from a PS4 Pro because believe it or not, not everybody out there has a PS5 console. Some people still rocking even the PS3 or even the PS4. So for those people, I feel like it is a no brainer for you guys to go ahead and upgrade if you can afford it. Because listen, I know the PS4 Pro back in 2016 was only $399 making it a $300 difference back in 2016, which is crazy. But if you can afford it, then by all means, man, I say go out and get it, man. You will be impressed by the changes. But again, keep in mind, this is me talking before actually testing it out because I haven't seen any footage uh, other than what they showed during the, uh, the live stream. So listen, I don't know, man. Let me know how you guys are feeling about it down in the comment section below. Do you guys think the PS5 Pro is worth the upgrade or will you guys just be holding out and waiting for the PS6 to drop, possibly with GTA 6? Either way, man, thank you guys for watching, man. Hope you guys found some value, some information in this video that I gave. If you did, hit that like button for your boy, man. If you guys are new here, click on that subscribe button down below and join the family, man. Thanks again for watching. Happy gaming, squad. We out. <laughs>